pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty. Um, well, we have an appointment at 6.35. Now we can sit back and enjoy the rest of the meeting. We have Al Wishart here with a uh, point. appointment of a part time officer. So I'd like to introduce, uh, probably not for the first time, uh, Ryan Bartholet. Uh, Ryan's been on our auxiliary since 2013. He's been a member of the fire department as a call firefighter for since uh, for six years, right? No, six years? 2010. Um, Back in March of 2015, Ryan applied for one of the part-time positions that was open, and the uh, police advisory board had chosen to um, hire somebody and then make a, uh, put a one-person wait list for a year, just to uh, look forward to see if we needed if we had, if we had to fill a, fill a position, not to have the board come back. Um, and they also uh, liked Ryan a lot, so the police advisory board um, had suggested to the select board that we put Ryan on a one-year um, wait list. Uh, the select board approved that in March of 2015. Um, because of some expe unexpected uh, mandatory retirement and then an injury to an officer, we, we have to fill a position that we weren't actually expecting to fill. Um, so I bring Ryan before you, just to give you a little bit of Ryan's history with us. Like I said, he's been in the auxiliary for since 2013, which is I think it's just under two and a half years. Yep. Uh, during that time, he's written quite a bit. Um, more, more recently, he, um, he was part of a, a medical call where he and a full-time officer uh, responded to the parking lot of CVS for a drug overdose and was part of the, he and the other officer um, administered Narcan to that person um, and effectively probably saved their life. Um, so he's he's tested. Uh, he fits in very well uh, with everybody else. I hear nothing but good things about him. Uh, he comes with a fair amount of training as well. He's been to this uh, standardized field sobriety testing uh, training, which is, is that three days? Yeah. Uh, three days. Three days. Um, he's academy trained already from the part-time academy. All of his first responder training, firearms training, uh, is ready to go. The biggest training uh, areas that we'd have to uh, deal with in terms of Ryan would be the dispatch related um, trainings which come up in uh, January. But uh, we think he would make a, a great addition to our, our membership and I would ask you to appoint him to that position. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? The appointment will be from January 3rd, 2016 through January 2nd, 2017, the one year probation period. Okay. <coughs> Motion to affirm. Make a motion to affirm the appointment. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be a part of our force. Thank you. Thank you. Keep writing. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, um, we have a highway superintendent, David DeRochers, who's here to show us some signs. Roll along with me just to show you the difference. These are the new MUTCD requirements. This would be the old sign that we've been using. It's a six inch extruded with a, I think it's a three inch letter on those, or a four. This is the new sign. Uh, the new standards require an uppercase and a lowercase lettering. This would be the minimum size that would be acceptable on low speed streets. Um, on the higher speed streets, the minimum letter size would be six inch and four and a half on the lower case. Um, I've been talking to the sign company a little bit. Um, I'd like to go with this sign on most of the lower speed streets so we don't have a, a six foot long sign um, on a lot of these, which would be pretty easy to get broken with wind or vandalism or whatever. Um, I'd hate to see them too much bigger than this in most instances. Um, on a high speed 
um, roads, they even go up to like a 12 inch high flat plate. What would be our high speed roads, Dave? Um, I'm thinking like East Street and some of the main intersections like East and New Ludlow. Yep. I don't see the need when you're at New Ludlow that you're going to be stopping at East Street. So the East Street sign could be the smaller variety. Um, but if you're traveling along East Street, passing New Ludlow or passing a few of the other side streets, it might be advantageous to use the, the larger lettering anyway. But as you can see, it, it, when you go with the larger lettering, it's going to extend everything and the, the length of the sign might increase a little bit too. But um, I just wanted to bounce this off the select board, make sure that they're okay with everything as far as the, the look. Um, <coughs> But just this will give you a, pretty much an idea of what the differences are going to be, and this will be. It'll be like a totally different street. And you'll be able to see it. That's for sure. And this is all the uh, the reflective sheathing on this is the um, high intensity prismatic, so you can see it. It lights up like a like you shine a light on it when your car light hits it. Okay. So. So. We have choice of colors or anything. There, there is a, a couple colors. This is the, the color that is recommended, um, and it's what we've been using, Massachusetts green, I guess. But um, there are a couple of alternate colors that they will allow, but it's not recommended. I mean, they, they're trying to standardize everything to the green. No purple. No purple. If I remember right, Dave, there's a provision that allows for the old style in historic district. Have you looked into that? Is it, are you planning to do that, or have you talked to the historic district? At all? I hadn't got into it. There's probably only like one or two signs that would um, West Street. Typically, that would be uh, the 202 signs or Mass Mass DOT Mass signs. DOT, yeah, but like maybe Ferry Hill, West Street, Common, or Common in uh, Center. I, I know that they allow a small, you know, exemption for historic districts, but I think um, I'd have to read the, the regulations pretty carefully on a, on a main road like that. I think they're going to want to see some kind of minimum. This is, this is the bare minimum. Now, it goes up from here as far as speeds um, traveling on 202. Um, you'd have to look at the actual speed limit in the area and make sure that it was of, of a size large enough that people, you know, can see it so they're not slowing down or slamming the brakes on and potentially causing an accident trying to find a, a street. But yeah, there are some exemptions on on historic districts, but in our town it's very, very limited. Only a few signs it would be affected. But uh, for the most part, this would be the average street sign. If, uh, if you uh, are happy with it, we'll go ahead and place an order. With me. Okay. Is that all I need? Okay. Very good. When you place an order, how many are you going to do? Uh, I think there's around 178 signs that need to be ordered right now. And what's the cost or something like that? It depends on the size of the lettering and everything. I've got to go through and categorize each one. <coughs> this sign here is about $40, I think, $38. Uh, just, we, for, just for the sign. Did we put money aside for this or something? We had a, a Warren article um, mm -hmm. two years ago. Um, right now, we don't have enough money to replace the post, so we'll be just replacing the signs, although we have to have a new bracket. The bracket's going to be a little bit bigger because the sign is so large, the old brackets wouldn't be strong enough to hold a bigger sign. It would just snap off with the wind. So we'll do the bracket and, and the sign right now. What do you do with the old signs? Um, we've got a stack of them at the behind our shop right now. We'll bring them down to Sullivan and they go back to the general fund, the uh, Scrap aluminum. It. Yeah. But the price of uh, metals are way down right now, so we haven't made a, a run to Sullivan. We've just been stocking them up. Where if anybody want to buy their signs? You never know. It's a yeah, it's sign auction. To do that. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sorry that you get out so early tonight, though. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Um, so we'll move to departmental reports. Make a motion to accept the departmental reports as written. Sorry. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Make a motion to sign, approve and sign the maintenance warrants number 37, 38, and 39. Second. All in favor? Aye. That top one there, you just need to sign it to prove it that you missed signing the actual document. Uh, That's all. Okay. Yeah. The following common VIX to approve. First one is for Rusty's Country Store, 102 New Ludlow Road in Granby. They're all <coughs> expiring December 31st, 2016, correct? Yeah. The next one is for David Kaskeski, doing business as Dave's Natural Garden at 35 Amherst Street, Bambi. Next one is AAH Corp Dunkin' Donuts at 77 West State Street, Bambi. Rockwell Amusements, New England Rides and Amusements, 10 Red Oak Drive, Johnston, Rhode Island. And that's, is that for? That's the Charter Day uh, Amusement Company. <coughs> Ryan Borland, doing business as Red Fire Farm, 7 Carver Street, Granby. The Granby Booster Club, 385 East State Street. Are you going to waive the fee on yeah. that one? Yeah, request is to waive the fee. We're going to waive the fee. Mm -hmm. Everybody in favor of waiving the fee? So the Granby Booster Club at 385 East State Street with the we with the waiver, the fee waiver being used. Cumberland Farms number six six nine eight West State Street and Pleasant Street, Granby. Flam's Garden Center doing business as Dickinson's Farms, 134 South Street, Bambi. Dickinson's Farm at 309 East State Street, Bambi. And Gunk's Holding Corp, 30 West State Street, Granby. What is that? Chris Gunk's. BP. 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 Yeah. BP. Cynthia. Maloney doing business as Cindy's Drive-In at 455 East State Street. And Immaculate Heart <coughs> of Mary Church, 256 State Street in Granby. I would also request that that fee be waived for Immaculate Heart of Mary. With the waiving of the fee for Immaculate Heart of Mary. The motion to approve said uh, common VIC licenses. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just one one place, right? One place, yes.
We have the following entertainment licenses 2016. The uh, first one is for Red Fire Farm, 107 Carver Street in Granby, for entertainment license to provide entertainment to customers as follows live entertainment consisting of a DJ or small band, <coughs> 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. only on August 20th, 2016. 16 to be located at 7 Carver Street, Grammy, Mass. Next one is ACM doing business as Cindy's Drive-In, 455 East State Street, Grammy, Mass. For entertainment license to provide entertainment to customers as follows. Live music, first Saturday of every month for classic car shows. Be located at 455 East State Street, Grammy. New England Rides and Amusements, Dufresne Park. Kendall and Taylor Street in Granby. For entertainment license to provide entertainment for charter days located at Dufresne Park, Granby on June 10th to the 12th, 2016. Uh, the Immaculate Heart of Mary Church, 256 State Street, Granby, Mass. For entertainment license to provide entertainment, live band DJs for events to be held on the grounds of Immaculate Heart of Mary Church located at 256 State Street, Grammy Mass. Is that all I would like to request, yeah, I would like to request the fee be waived on that one. Also. With the fee being waived for the Immaculate Heart of Mary Church. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a Dufresne Recreation and Conservation Area Permit request. The applicant is Northeast Chevy GMC Truck Club. Responsible group member, Frank Litwinis. Reservation date, August 6th and 7th, 2016. Arriving at 9, departing at 5. No police requested, no liquor. Maximum number of people, 200. Type of function, a truck show. Make a motion to approve. Second. Is, Discussion? Is that the one who brings in campers to? No. Oh, this is it? Oh. We all, all three of us sign on this slide here? No, Just it's usually uh, chairman of the board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> 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 Maybe we could suggest that they put a uh, spot on the application about people camping, just to find out so that we know. Is this for the sewer fee? Yes, you need to read it aloud, yes. Okay, sewer use fee warrant number 16-1 to Karen M. Stilato, agent for collection of sewer use fees for Granby in the county of, New Ham of Hampshire. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby required to collect from the several persons named on the sewer use fee list, herewith committed to you as therein set forth with interest the sum total of such list being $98,400 Thirty-nine dollars and fifty cents, 
the whole amount billed to all persons known to us to be liable for sewer use fees. And you are to pay over said sewer use fees and interest to Steve Stephen R. Nally, treasurer of the town of Granby, or to his successor in office at the times and in the manner provided by General Laws, Chapter 83, given under our hands this 21st day of December, 2015. Do we need a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a, a letter from McDuffie School regarding the sewer. Dear Chairman Bale, as you are aware, the McDuffie School has been investigating options to permanently resolve concerns emanating from an outdated and fatigued water, wastewater disposal system at our facility. At this point, we have determined the best option available to us is an inter-municipal connection to the Belchertown Wastewater Treatment Facility. As a result, and in an effort to comply with an outstanding administrative consent order issued by the DEP, we must move forward without further delay. It is for this reason I am writing today to inform you of the McDuffie School's decision and call your attention again to the established deadline to achieve compliance as specified in the administrative consent order. That deadline is July 30th, 2017. I am further requesting your assistance in identifying what actions or approval the Town of Granby will request of the McDuffie School to establish a meaningful schedule of completion. At the present time, it is our intent to install a low pressure force main beginning at the McDuffie School facility, traveling the entire distance in the northerly direction to the, to the Belchertown and Granby town line, at which time the force main will exit School Street and continue on George Hannum Road to the Belchertown facility. At some point in the proposed critical path route, a crossing of School Street will be necessary. In addition, a suspended crossing of the Ford Pond outfall will also be necessary. The McDuffie School will continue to work with its consulting engineers, GZA Geo Environmental Inc., to provide detailed construction plans and work with local boards and commissions to include, but are not limited to, the Granby Highway Department and the Granby Conservation Commission. The school and our consulting engineers will also be agreeable to addressing any butter concerns that may be brought forth regarding the proposed project. Recognizing the significance of the project, we are about to undertake substantial capital outlay we intend to meet the established deadline for compliance with applicable DEP regulations and the administrative consent order. And I am seeking a prompt and definitive scope of requirements or conditions the Town of Granby may seek, which will enable us to move forward with this critical project without further delay. We are available to meet in person, conduct on-site meetings with the Board of Sele Selectmen, the Granby Highway Superintendent, Conservation Commission, or other interested members of boards or committees deemed necessary. Whatever is decided, I would like to again impress upon you that time is of the essence in the early stage of this project. I look forward to your prompt response. Sincerely, Stephen Griffin. Stephen, 
have any idea of some of they're just going to go up 202. Is that the deal? Yeah. All right. Uh, they have to get a, a right away up for up school street. How, how does that process work? Is it somebody have to involve town council? Yeah, I would. I would. Because you want to know what the path is, and then you're going to give them the right away to be able to get in. So there. should we refer that to any? Yeah, I can. Is there anything else that? We have to worry about, or is it just go to planning? Well, I don't know. Uh, does Parks Oversight have to deal with it because they're in charge of the conservation area? There is that part of the conservation they're area. Not in they're not in there. Okay. No, they're not. If they're going straight up to two, they won't be there. Well, they are called School Street, but I don't. Oh. I don't know where they're coming out, but I, it's, I don't think it should be anywhere near the park. Okay. Planning, I would assume conservation. I would. <coughs> Maybe what we should suggest is that they we have a joint meeting with everyone involved at some point and soon so that conservation can get started because they can be pretty soon. Well, I think we need that here. Are we? We could start here. I don't know if we have to win the two to the mall, but it's more planning and conservation. I think we should probably initiate it and then Well we can forward the letter to each of the each of the boards and then uh, write back to Steve that he should probably try and uh, coordinate a joint meeting with everybody. He should or we should? We should. You want us to? Yeah, I think we should I should too. come from okay. I should start with this time. But Eddie should be, in the meantime, alerted so that he could get calling on whatever. Um, I'm sure if it's going to be right away, it's going to have to be done right away, I would guess. Should he be at that meeting? Or just send in a... Yeah, we just alert him, maybe send it to him and see if he thinks he should be. I don't know, maybe the initial one he won't necessarily need to be, but I would assume we're going to incur some legal expenses, are we not? Yeah, there would be. I mean, should we be paying for that? No. no. So that should be that's something we should discuss with them. How's this anything the building inspector would be involved in? Well, I suppose it's going to be a trench, so I would say probably building and probably plumbing. There are things that, I mean, maybe they, I guess they'll have their own person, so we'll really have. Well, I would say their engineering firm, uh, Geotechnic, yeah, was yeah. it Geotechnical, I think, they, is their engineering firm? So, we could have their... We could at least alert our building inspector and say if they're interested. If, 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 if it turns out they're not needed, they're not needed. Yeah. They may want to know what's going on. And now we're going to start getting inquiries from people all we're going to be able to get into it. Mm -hmm. I would assume. It's, Especially from the people down on Porch Pond, because they're the ones that have problems. So, as I understand the way this goes, they own the system so that anyone who ties in has to pay a fee to McDuffie. If they're yeah, the town wouldn't be, res be uh, responsible for anything, even if it breaks down after the fact or there's a right. plug. Are they looking to do that, do you know? What? To yeah. have people hook in? Oh, I don't know that, no. <laughs> I was under the impression it's a forced main, which means they don't hook in. Oh, well, maybe you're right. That, that was my impression, is that that's what they were planning on doing. But I wonder if DEP, knowing the situation on there, is going to say something different. Don't know. Don't know. A low pressure forced main. So, a forced main, you don't have any. You can't connect. The idea it's a pressurized system, so. That's probably good to know that so that if people ask, we can say, no, you can do it. So, our, our, um, what we're going to do is respond to this, correct? Yep. Before our next meeting? And, and just, how are we going to respond? Just saying that we're going to set up a meeting? We, we really should give them some indication of what our well, intent we're is. Like I think we should shoot for the first part of January. If they're, if they're under a the timetable, I yeah, think we should I just, have information. We should explain that we don't have a lot of um, 
we don't really have a lot of jurisdiction over this type of project, but we'll be glad to coordinate a meeting with the um, particular boards in town, just make sure everything well, gets coordinated. One thing we have to keep in mind, though, that this project is going to preclude us from doing the same thing for that part of town. Just the thought, that's all. It's, because if that's the course, course main system, then we're not going to run a second system side by side. So. Yeah, unless they start giving them money away, I don't think we'll get down there. No, I, I, don't, I agree with you, but I'm saying that we just have to remember that. Okay, so you're going to craft a letter, Chris, and to them in the next couple of weeks and I tell think them that we will be. We have a meeting of force. That's too early with the, <coughs> the 18th is Martin Luther King Day, so we'd be meeting on Tuesday. Tuesday. I mean, is this something that we should just give a phone call and follow it up with a letter, just to? That'd be fine. I, mean, I think I just think we should in try terms to, of speed, yeah, I suppose. you know, help them out as best we can. Help them out. Yes, yeah. because I, I'm not sure that they feel we've been that responsive so in the past. So, Chris, want to give them a buzz and see what kind of dates we can set up. Don't forget, after the 19th, it's one of my schedules, kind of. Iffy as far as whether it's really Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have a letter from the town clerk regarding the voting machines. Dear select board members, last year. I presented an article at our annual town meeting to purchase new voting equipment. Article 17 passed by majority, one opposing. The state has approved two new voting systems, the ImageCast from LHS Associates out of New Hampshire and the DS200 from Election Systems and Software out of Nebraska. After reviewing the two choices, it has been determined that the ImageCast would be the best choice for our town. In order to use the new equipment, and discontinue using the existing system, the select board must take a vote as required by General Law, Chapter 54, Section 34. Please be aware that this vote is not the same as an appropriation to buy the equipment. The vote must specifically state to start using the image cast equipment and to discontinue the AccuVote equipment that we are presently using. This vote must be taken at a meeting held at least 120 days before a state or presidential primary or state election and at least 60 days before, before a municipal election. A notice of the vote from the select board agreeing on using the image cast equipment and discontinuing the old AccuVote equipment must be sent to the elections office within five days of the vote. It is my wish to start this process in order for the town to have the image cast voting equipment and have the poll workers trained in this equipment for our annual town election that we will be held on May 16, 2016. Thanking you in advance for your time and efforts in this matter, respectfully submitted Catherine A. Kelly Regan, town clerk. So, what she wants to vote for us yeah. to say yes? Yeah. We have a motion? Make a motion. Approve. We, we need the vote to say that um, that to start using the image cast equipment and to discontinue the AccuVote equipment it has to be stated a certain way, correct? Go ahead, Larry. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Just right. just say as as recommended. We'll per we'll let per the letter. Per letter. As recommended by our um, town clerk, Catherine Kelly Regan. I make a motion that we discontinue the use of the AccuVote uh, electronic voting equipment and start using the, what do you call it, Ian? The image cast. The image cast system. Sounds so exciting. So moved. Yes. Second. Second. All right. 
Right. Um, I did look it up online just for the heck of it. It's basically the same optical scan thing we've been using, which is updated. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, the West Street School discussion. There was an email. You, Is that you, email in there? No, I didn't put the email in. But you, you want to go up and print it off? Or? Um, well, it was. It was just a. You, I really don't. Saw that. Yeah, I don't really understand why it was sent because. Um, Could it you didn't just give a little. Yeah, I can. Synopsis of it. I mean, basically, the question is, what would we do with the building? after if the um build a school project goes through what will we do with west street school um i've been pretty consistently saying that nobody should vote for the school project thinking that we, we can just move all our town offices in there because it certainly would not be that simple um so we don't really know the disposition of that on the other hand Speaking for myself, I don't even think I'll be here a minute. Uh, what have we got for how long is the timetable for when will the school be completed? They were saying uh, two years, two or three years. So I may or may not be, you know. Be towards the end of your term. Yeah, be toward the end of my term. So we can't really make any decisions about that building now. That would be binding anyway. You can't bind a future board to make a particular decision. But there's not really an informed decision that we can make, I think. Probably the most important thing is that people understand you can't just move into the building. Um, it might be cost prohibitive to do so. Um, we certainly know a lot of things would have to be brought up to code. Um, so these are some of the things that go on. We might send, you know, options. We could, if we, we could try to move into it, if we have the money to spend on it, we could uh, send out a request for proposals for usage. Um, we could, conceivably have it demolished and, you know any of those things would be possible but that's there's really not much to say until after we um, have a school vote and we know if we, first of all if we have a school and then I don't know not really much we can't make decisions about something in three years well you, you may want to if the school votes go through maybe have that reconvene that survey board just like you did for Aldrich, and have them go in and look at it and make a recommendation. Yeah, I think to do anything before the vote, just, just spin our wheels because we don't know what's going to happen. If the vote goes through, I, I always thought what we would do is convene some type of a committee or a board and go in there and look at all the options demolition, renovation, sale, and come up with a recommendation. So. I thought the survey board did a good job. With the various options for, but you certainly need somebody with some knowledge because you can, you and I can look at something and see one thing, and someone who knows something about a building, you look at it and see something entirely different. So you know, the survey board has an engineer on it, has the fire chief, and has the building inspector, the three key people. I, and, and then again, I think what we probably should do is then resurvey all the town about space needs, like we did a few years ago there when we had that before we moved in here to find out people's. Needs may or as far as what they actually need for room, so we know how much of the building we need to occupy. I think the biggest issue people are running into is storage of records. That's the biggest it's problem. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. So. There we are. Yeah, so we could just, uh, I mean, I, I fully agree. I think he, he, he sent us that email. I think it's, we serve them right in bringing it to the board, and this is the board's response. You know, we can't do anything until the vote. Well, but I do think once the vote is taken and it's, it's moving right? forward, then I do think immediately we should start. Think about it, right? Yeah, and talking about it. Yeah. So. What's the what's the anticipated construction? 30 to, 30 to 36 months. So two and a half, three years, give or take. From spring, March, February, no, March. the summer. Summer, yeah. It was summer. So you're looking at a 
Because, because what they're looking at trying to do is coordinate with the summer vacation to do some of the major repair or major renovation at East Meadow School <coughs> while the kids are out. Yeah. Okay. Do the major, build the new building while they're in, and then while school is in session, be building the pre K through three building, then move four, five, and six over to that building, and then complete the Finish the renovation. Now, they want to try and do like the kitchen area, try and do the areas, the big areas yeah. that are easy enough to deal with and get it done in a three month period of time or two month period of time. So, if you're talking starting in 2016, you'll get it 2019. Yeah, give or take 18, 19. Yep. Okay, we have a, um, a letter that we had asked Chris to craft for us to the school committee. <coughs> the committee members at the last select board meeting, the topic of shared services was discussed with the development and hiring of a shared public facilities department and director completed. The board was interested in looking at additional areas. When the topic of shared services was originally discussed, it was regarding the accounting and business functions of the town and the school. The board would like to pursue this area for development as a shared service. Please address this letter at your next meeting and let us know if the committee is interested in creating a shared position for this area. We look forward to your response to this request. Thank you in advance for your prompt attention to this request. Sincerely, three board members. You, you think we should say anything in it about how we feel about I know we say that when the topic of sh was originally discussed, it was regarding the... I guess it says that we would... I mean, I just hope they get the, the message that this is something that we definitely want. And all right with the way it's stated and not I, so it would be a little bit more um i mean i already basically stated i already told you what i um thought i don't really think we need a letter but i'm going to go along with you guys um but, uh, make a motion to approve the letter second all in favor aye, aye. Make a motion to approve the minutes, the December 7th board minutes. Make a motion to approve the December 7th board minutes. Second. Um, favor? Aye. Aye. All right, um, we're not going to go into executive session, only to return so we can adjourn our regular meeting. We will come out of executive only session only. We're not going to be no more business. No, right? no more business. Okay, so, um, under Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, Clause 3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation, the board may have a detrimental effect on litigating. A discussion may have a detrimental got, got effect right on right litigating right. position of the board and health open session. So, that's our acceptance of the meeting. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, to go. Actually, should we recess first? Give everybody a chance to clear out. Well, you you take the roll call vote to enter in, and then yeah, you recess, waiting for the camera so, to break down. Um, roll call vote to move into executive session. Bale, aye. Dale, aye. 